Davis and interwebs. Oh, okay. Ah, you're here. All right. I, I thought my kitchen was on fire with the way the glare was coming off the ceiling. Here. Anyway, uh, so since you are here, I am assuming that you received, propagated, read, filed, lost, found again, read again, and then got my email about the video game and those properties in which we own and picked one suitable for a script. Yeah, um, not sure about the glare part but uh what what's with the tv oh uh it's for a upcoming thing that was uh gonna happen not foreshadowing nothing just ignore it it's uh it's uh it's uh, it's just uh yeah prop yeah uh, so uh, which one did you pick mm. yes i picked resident evil really uh, of all those games uh, that was on that list you picked the only one that was a horror game. Uh, I'm, I'm not surprised. It was the only one that made sense. I mean, what would you even do for a Tetris movie? <gasps> Don't tread on my dreams, man. Anyway, just tell me your stupid script. Okay, so I happen to be a big fan of the games, so I want this to be super accurate. So we're going to start with some narration explaining what the Umbrella Corporation is. At the beginning of the 21st century, the Umbrella Corporation had become the largest commercial entity in the United States. And then we're going to show someone taking vials of the T-virus, and as the person leaves, they throw one of the vials, causing the virus to escape through the air vents. So, just like the games, you're saying everyone is going to die because of the virus outbreak. Oh no! No, the computer is going to lock all the doors and fumigate them. What? We're also going to chop a woman's head off with an elevator! Oh, God, are you high? I mean, I'm as curious as the next guy about how you kill somebody with an elevator, but are you telling me that you think this is being accurate to the game? Well, I'm just adding some new elements, that's all. So we are then introduce our main character, Alice. Alice? Alice? There is no Alice in Resident Evil video game. She's a new character. Uh, think of this movie as a uh, prequel to the first game. They, they did a game that was a prequel to the first game. This wasn't it. Oh, um, then think of it as a different prequel. Yeah. Wait, Alice? Like, in Wonderland, Alice, with the caterpillar and the smoking and the, and the cat? Uh, what, are you seriously shoehorning that story in again? Did you have enough of that with the Matrix? I don't know what you're talking about. We quickly learn that Alice doesn't remember anything as she looks around seeing a cryptic note, some weapons in her dresser, and even her wedding photo, but looks confused by it all. However, before she can look confused for too long, she is not only attacked by some random guy, but a bunch of soldiers in gas masks that storm the house. Are you sure you picked Resident Evil for this movie? Because this is starting to sound more like Call of Duty. I don't know what you're talking about. They take Alice and the random guy down into a secret lab. The random guy tells me he's a cop, and the soldiers who all have the umbrella logo on their shoulder are treating Alice as if she is one of them. They realize she has amnesia, and they take both her and the cop into a train, taking them deeper into the facility. Okay, the game's also had an underground facility, and it sounds like the train is similar, but where are the, uh, the zombies, man? 
you know, shambling, Arr, zombie dogs, zombie birds. Have I mentioned you don't have any zombies? We're getting there. We're getting there. On the train, they discover another person suffering from amnesia, and Alice recognizes him from the wedding photo. Once they get off the train, the head soldier finally explains they all work for Umbrella. Well, except for the cop. And the married couple are actually security operatives with their whole marriage being a fake just to cover up this fact. Their job is to guard the entrance to a top secret Umbrella Lab called The Hive. The Hive itself is located underground, deep beneath the streets of Raccoon City. And I'm supposed to believe that they were able to not only build what looks to be like a 10-story building underground, but under a city. I think you were better off when you were trying to get me to believe you could build a city underwater. I don't know what you're talking about. They make their way inside and start talking about our main villain for this film. So... This is when we start talking about the zombies? What? What? No, I, I'm talking about the AI that controls the hive called the Red Queen. Five hours ago, Red Queen went homicidal. Sealed the hive and killed everyone down here. Again, with the Alice in Wonderland references. I, I swear, if, if you tell me the computer says the word, off with her heads, we are done here. Uh, no. Oh, she's uh, definitely not going to say that anymore. Uh, <laughs> so anyway, uh, they're, they're stuck uh, taking the long way around due to all the crap that the Red Queen did and the fact that she still has all the doors locked. This causes them to have to cut through Dining Hall B. I know this place is supposed to be big. And I mean big like your ego. But you're telling me it is big enough to warrant multiple dining halls? Well, regardless if it is or not, when they get there, they find that Dining Hall B is less for eating and more for storing large metal canisters that have skinless monsters inside of them. Huh. That has to be a bit difficult to explain at the yearly company picnic. Likely. From here, they are able to get to the Red Queen's chamber, but they leave behind two people to guard the cop. Explain again while they're dragging the cop along. I mean, they were already just casually chatting in front of him about the fake marriage that they had, and they used that to be security operatives guarding an entrance to a secret lab under the city. And now, same cop, while hanging out with them, and they are showing him that said secret lab has giant canned monsters hanging about in the dining room like they are the lunch special. What? are they thinking? They get to the Red Queen's chamber and unlock the door, but just as they are about to go into the server room and shut her down, she activates her defenses. Oh, God, like every other woman I've ever known. As soon as I try to get to the server room, I've already passed the second floor. I'm slowly moving down. I get to the door of the server room, and I turn the key. But anyway, so she locks the doors and seals the room. No, 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 no. She kills all but three of them with lasers. That's less defense and more offense, pal. And may I point out that you have now killed about half of your cast, and you still haven't shown one god-blessed zombie. Really don't get why you're being so impatient about the zombies. Because, my fine, bald-headed connoisseur of bullshit, it is a zombie movie. And a zombie movie implies that there are going to be multiple zombies. We're almost there. We're almost there. So, they finally get to the Red Queen server, and they prepare to shut her down. And she implies that doing so is a bad idea. You're all going to die down here. She isn't implying anything. She is predicting the end of the film. It's a zombie movie. That is a fair bet. Once they shut her down, they regroup with the others, but it doesn't take long for them to get attacked by the dead scientists, who are now zombies. Obviously. Oh, oh, no. Well, was that supposed to be a surprise reveal? 
If you told me they had become Care Bears, or, or maybe Unicorns, I might have been a little surprised. But this is Resident Evil. They had to be zombies. Or were you just going to be another one of those films that uses the title of something popular without actually having anything remotely to do with it? Uh, you know, people hate that. But you make me write films like that all the time. Well, yeah, because they make money, but, but people still hate that. Well, regardless, then, they get attacked by the zombies, and one of the operatives by the name of JD gets killed. The rest get separated, causing operatives named Rain and Kaplan to be stuck with a fake husband operative inside the Red Queen room, while Alice and the cop find themselves wandering the hive in different locations. Let me guess, they decide to apply direct horror film knowledge by splitting up. And you are also going to tell me that in doing so will actually lead to something interesting plot-wise and not some random scene that could have easily been taken out of the film. Yeah, actually. Uh, Alice finds a bunch of zombie dogs and remembers not only how to shoot a gun, but also how to do a flying kick to the face. Okay, uh, you might have something there. We'll have to be sure to put that in the trailer, though. The cop, on the other hand, is looking around one of the offices of papers when he gets attacked by a zombie. Alice rescues him and he tells her the truth. He actually isn't a cop at all. He actually works for an organization that is trying to get Umbrella shut down by proving all the evil research that they are doing. What kind of research? The illegal kind. So his big plan was to break in, pretending to be a cop, and steal papers. No, not at all. His uh, sister was undercover and trying to steal a sample of the T-virus, uh, the thing that's making all the zombies. Uh, hearing this, Alice has a flashback letting her know that she was the contact for the sister, and she begins to fear that she might be responsible for all of this. It was the fake husband. What? Your, your, your little twist, it was the fake husband. Uh, why, why, why do you think that? Because it ain't going to be Alice, since she's the main character, and you just revealed that Fake Cop is actually trying to bring down Umbrella and couldn't even get inside the damn place. So who's left? The operatives that just arrived today? No, no, no. The Fake Husband. It's like almost as obvious as that glare on your noodle in the midday sun. I don't think it's that obvious. And I don't think the plot twist is obvious either. Anyway, getting back to the plot, the two of them regroup with the others, but find themselves trapped. So, Alice decides to turn the Red Queen back on and threaten to overload her circuits and fry her if she doesn't help them escape. She agrees and gives them a way out through the utility tunnels. Oh, God. Uh, I know it's based off a video game, but... Did you have to put in a sewer level? I didn't say sewer. I said utility tunnels. Is going to look like concrete walls, pipes, and water dripping everywhere. Well, yeah. Sewer level. So, since we got this route from the homicidal AI that has so far tried to kill every living being in this place, how long before the zombies show up? About a minute. This and the fact that my fifth wife learned how to look at my browser history is why I don't trust computers. She nor Google will rule my life. So they fight off the zombies as best they can, but eventually have to take refuge on top of some large pipes. They try to crawl on the pipes to safety, but end up getting separated from Kaplan, who looks like he's dead meat, but decides to crawl in the ventilation system to make life inconvenient for the zombies. You're gonna have to work for your meal! Right, because maybe if the zombies have to crawl after them, they'll be like, Oh, dude, wait, no, no. They got two for one specials on the Brain Burger down at the Burger Shack. We'll shamble on down there. Get a burger instead. Regardless of that interesting scenario, uh, the others are trying to get back to the train platform since we established earlier that the entryway from the mansion is going to be closing soon, locking them inside. It is at this point that Alice suddenly has an incredibly important flashback. Oh, 
So she basically learned how to use blue screen and basic lighting techniques? No, no. She remembered that there was an antivirus to cure the T-virus. Is that important? Well, since we established a single bite or scratch infects you and the operative named Rain has been bitten like a dozen times up to this point, yeah, it's been important at the moment. There's a cure! You're gonna be okay! And how exactly would she even know this? This is she a security operative that has been hanging out inside the mansion with fake husband? Because as we established, she was planning on stealing it for fake cop sister. But this is when we have a huge plot twist. Right, right. The fake husband was a guy stealing the T-virus all along. Yeah, but you can let me have my fun and act surprised at least. Oh. Wow. What a twist. I know, right? So we reveal the antivirus has been on the train the whole time. Fake husband gets attacked by a zombie that bites him, but still escapes the room since he is the only one with a gun. This is when the Red Queen tells them... I've been a bad, bad girl. Oh, Lord. Why does this sound like it's about to get creepy? Don't, don't, don't make this creepy. What? No, no, she was aware that one of the skinless creatures from Dining Hall B got loose. Uh, this is basically the same creature that's called the Liquor in the video games. Uh, she's been guiding it to where she wants it to go by locking and unlocking doors, and we now get to see it attack the fake husband. Oh my god. So, it all went well. Except they're still locked in a room. Well, the Red Queen could help them with that. I can give you the code, but first you must do something for me. What do you want? One of your group is infected. I require her life for the code. I cannot believe I am taking the side of a homicidal computer with a voice creepier than my seven-year-old niece. But, but, but just barely. It makes more sense because this woman has been bit, and I mean bit a lot, then risk her becoming a zombie, they should just, you know... But, 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 no, no, what are the, the chances of this antivirus working? Not so good. I hope I never get stuck in a zombie apocalypse with you. You should be so lucky. I've been preparing for the end of the world since 1992. Trust me, I am stocked up on Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles memorabilia, DVDs, and pajamas, and I am far more prepared than you will ever be. That is a scary thought. Anyway, they, they, they can't go along with Killing Rain, and before they know it, the power goes out again and the door opens. What the hell? Was one of those zombies trying to make popcorn and blew a fuse? Be because I've done that before. It is possible. No, Kaplan is on the other side. He survived, and since the Red Queen wouldn't open the door, he fried her. The bitch wouldn't open the door, so I had to fry her. Right. The guy hobbles his ass through the ventilation with a crowd of zombies chasing behind him. Uh-huh. Uh, sure you did. Uh, please tell me we're almost done. Yep, they get on the train, give everyone the antivirus, and look like they're going to make it okay. When the super liquor attacks. Wait! In any other film or context, Super Liquor would be a great thing. In this one, I'm going to say, what the hell is this? The Super Nintendo version? Well, it's explained that when the liquor was able to digest fresh DNA, it evolved into a larger, stronger hunter. One, and I don't even know why I'm bothering to point this out, that was not in any game. And two, it doesn't make a lick of sense. Well, regardless if it does or not, it takes out Kaplan and scratches Fake Cop. Alice keeps it busy while she tells Fake Cop to open the doors, only to have Rain become a zombie right then and there and attack him. And this is why... And this is why when someone gets bit over and over and over, you kill them. No offense, just basic survival. Please, tell me now that she is a zombie, they don't have any problem making her go dead. Nope, not at all. 
Rain's body lands on the button to open the door, and they kill the super liquor. After this, they run back to the door just in time and are about to leave when Alice breaks down in tears over all the people they've lost. Fake cop, uh, whose name I have failed to mention up to this point is Matt, tries to make her feel better, but doesn't go so well. I mean, we, can, we can find... What is it? What in the actual hell? Umbrella scientists storm in. They take both into custody, mentioning that they want Matt in the Nemesis program. An undisclosed amount of time later, Alice wakes up in a medical facility. She escapes using her security know-how and wonders a now empty Raccoon City where newspapers proclaim the dead walk. She grabs a shotgun. And we roll credits. What do you think? I can't take it anymore. I feel like somebody is watching me. I have to move this thing. Uh, oh, oh, ouch. These are surprisingly heavy. Why did I unplug the lights? Uh, uh, there. And try not to fall over. Jesus, dude. Do I, do I, have, to, do I have to actually say it out loud? Because... Other than zombies, zombie dogs, and one, one liquor, you have nothing in your Resident Evil movie from Resident Evil. We've got the logo. We're going to use the logo a lot. I don't care if you tattoo the logo on your head and bow to me every time we meet. You can put the logo everywhere in this thing. It still isn't Resident Evil. And I can tell you right now, there's nothing on the planet. Nothing. The gods could come down from their heavens, and the demons could come from below and threaten me with every bodily disease and pain that they could. There's no way I am ever going to make this script. What the hell did you just say? Oh, crap. When you told me that your writer had a Resident Evil script, what did I tell you? To make a movie even if it had giant robot rodents. Especially if it has giant robot rodents in it. I don't care what is or is not in that script. The name alone is going to make us tons of money. Do you remember when I told you the day that I hired you, what was the first thing I told you? Not to use your parking place or you'd have me shot? All right. What was the second thing I told you? To make sure any movie I greenlight made money or you'd have both my legs broken. Damn straight. And don't you think for a minute that those are just pretty words, because I got a 20-pound sledgehammer that's just aching to be used. I call her Matilda. And if you don't want to meet her, I suggest you stop passing on scripts that are going to make money. Now, if you gentlemen will excuse me, I got a meeting with a guy who says we could put 3D in 15 minutes of a movie and still charge full 3D prices. You know, if he could pull this off, I might just have to apologize to him for trying to run him over when he proposed to my daughter. Later. Wow. Was that not a damn word? I'll make your movie. But despite what my boss thinks, I don't see how this film could possibly do well. Wonderland? Are, are, are you seriously still 
shoehorning. You got showhorning. Shoehorning. Oh, shoe. <laughs> they take Alice and the random guy down into a secret lab. The random guy tells him he is a cop. And the soldiers... Um, yeah, I'm gonna do that again because I fucked that up. I don't know what... Uh, I don't... Uh, <laughs> see, I told you I was gonna mess it up. Okay, the games also had underground facilities, and it sounds like the training is similar, but where are the... The zombies! I just spit all over everything I owned, and that is so <laughs> making the blooper wheel. Regardless if it is or not, when they get there, they find that Dining Hall B is less for eating and more for storing large medical... <laughs> medical? <laughs> large medicals. Risk her becoming a zombie on the off chance of the ir ir virus. Is virus? The ir virus? The ir virus? The ir virus? The ir virus? What? Super lipper? Lipper? <laughs> you know, if he could pull this off, I might just have to stop. Ah, oh, damn it.